Etepu, Aslam Alaikum, Namaste, Haru Nefer. This is Kasank Maya Keparu with another video for you. And in this video, I want to talk about the difference between monotheism and polytheism. But before I do that, I'd like you to hit the like button on this video. And if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Um, hit the subscribe button to get notifications on when I go live and for more videos of this nature. Also, share this video with family and friends so we can get this revolution started. Now, before I address the topic at hand, I want to take a quick commercial break to talk about my new program, Reality Manifestation. This is a awesome program that's going to teach you how to manipulate the matrix. And for all those who are not aware of it, you are, your essential nature is God, man, God, woman. And because we lack a knowledge of self, we're not taught how to manipulate the 4D, the fourth dimensional world around us, which is really a holographic experience. So if you uh, hit the link below in the description box, it'll take you to this page, which will give you all the details on the upcoming program and um, how to sign up. And also there is a approval process, so we just don't accept everybody into this program. So let's get to the topic at hand, which is the difference between monotheism and polytheism. Now, when I started studying in the priesthood or, or began my journey as a magi or as an initiate, I knew there was something wrong with the world. I like, couldn't quite put my finger on it. It was only when I began to study polytheism um, that I started to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And I'm going to use this discussion of monotheism and polytheism to illuminate a greater point as to what is going on in the world today, which is that the ruling elite have you polarized into one perspective or thinking. And based on that polarization into that one perspective, it creates the fourth dimensional reality that you're interacting with today. And we know that there are an infinite number of realities that we can interact with. But because we have been subject to mass propaganda through uh, Hollywood and the major universities, we can't see these other realities that are on the peripheral and that they're just as legitimate and real as the one that is transpiring and unfolding uh, around you in front of your eyes. So let's go into this, please. Key difference between monotheism and polytheism. I am going to jump around a lot in this article because it's a lengthy article. That I don't want to read it verbatim. So uh, just stay with me um, and you will understand the direction I'm going in. Key difference between monotheism versus polytheism. Polytheism and monotheism are two words that can be very confusing for most of the people. Although there is a key difference between the two, let us approach this difference in the following manner. How many gods do you believe in? Now, they, right there, there, that's a setup. That's a problem because um, if you are operating based on belief in that truth, then you're going to be led down uh, the wrong path. This is a question that may sound absurd to all those who are followers of monotheistic religions. Monotheism is a belief that there is only one God. On the other hand, there are many religions that are polytheistic in nature and allow belief and worship of many gods. Though this is contradictory in thought and, and procedure, there are many similarities in the two types of religions. However, despite similarities, there are also differences that are hard to explain, and it is these differences that will be highlighted in this article. Now, what is monotheism? And you can see this, uh, this image here is the conventional um, uh, representation of God in the clouds, White dude, you know what I'm saying. Belief and worship of one God is the basis of monotheism. Many of the major religions of the world today can be considered monotheistic as they believe in one supreme being or deity. These are Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism. This may appear contradictory to some, particularly when Hinduism, with its pantheon of gods, is included in the religions that are monotheistic in nature. But, the, but those who, who talk of hundreds of gods in Hinduism conveniently forget that there is an underlining unity among these gods, and the different gods are manifestations of different powers only. Key, uh, that is a very good point when they speak about the underlining unity, all right? Let's go on. What is polytheism? Okay, 
Polytheism is the belief and worship of many gods. There are many who feel that many different gods in Hinduism, the example of polytheism. Hindu philosophy uh, uh, called Avista and propounded by Shankriya says that belief and worship of many deities has having different forms and qualities makes it easier for the believers to choose one of them. That's it. That's a problem there when we talk about, oh, this pantheon of gods that, that exists, exists for the purpose of you choosing one um, where you have a affinity uh, to, which is incorrect. But anyway, we'll go on. However, there are there is a greater understanding among all that are all these gods are mere manifestations of one supreme being, even though there's a basic trinity of gods called Brahman. Um, now, let's just jump around here. In polytheism, as in prevalent in Hinduism, people choose one god and worship that and do not accord the same high status to other deities. Now, that may be how it's done for those who are Hindus, but that is not correct, and I'll explain later on. Though they have respect for other gods too, they do not treat these deities as their own. Rather, people feel closer and nearer to their own chosen gods rather than to all the gods described in Hindu religion. A devout Hindu, whether he is a worshiper or of Raman, Krishna, and so on and so forth, other deities is other deities quick to acknowledge the existence of all other deities. In the heart of the hearts, every Hindu believes that these are mere manifestations of one supreme deity. Since the supreme being is not within his grasp, he conveniently chooses one of the deities. At the same time, he is aware that the deity he worships is exhibiting one of the aspects of his supreme being. This is the reason a Hindu is so tolerant and ready to accept the viewpoints of other religions. Now, they're using Hinduism as an example to show contrast between Western and non-Western religions. But I want you to note how when in these discussions put forth by scholars or think tanks or universities, they go around or do not bring up the fact of, uh, that, they're, that these religions have their origins in African religions because African religions are not afforded the same respect as other religions. So that's a problem in and of itself, but that is not the main issue I want to, uh, to address here. When we speak about the difference between monotheism and polytheism, what we're really looking at, my beloved, is the idea that emanates from left brain thinking and right brain thinking or integrated brain thinking. Now, when I say right brain thinking, right brain thinking is holistic in nature. Therefore, it encompasses left brain thinking because you have to have the both. And that's how we were able to build such civilizations as Atlantis, as Egypt, Kemet, as the great Mayan civilizations and, and Chinese civilizations. Western culture is, is polarized in left brain thinking which gave forth the idea of monotheism, one God. But more importantly, I want you to understand that when you are trapped in left brain thinking, which I often bring up the idea of the Hegelian dialectic, meaning it's, it's one or the other. And left brain thinking has a problem uh, which with complementary elements. You're either good or you're bad. You're right or you're wrong. And we've seen this many times play out in religion, which talks about my God is above your God. My God is correct. He is the light in the way. And the only way to get saved is through my Savior or my God. That is specifically a left brain process at work. Whereas right brain encompasses the variables, the many different perspectives, and has them working together as a system, as a cosmologic viewpoint. 
You can also equate this to as an ecosystem. What does this mean exactly? Well, many equate uh, monotheism to um, the Jews or even predating that um, by the Pharaoh Agnaton or, or before he took on that name, Amenhotep IV. So let's talk a little bit about that in the uh, ancient Egypt, the cult of the sun god in Agnaton's um, monotheism. Well. Egypt during the New Kingdom, the cult of the sun god Ra became increasingly important until it evolved into the uncompromising monotheism of Pharaoh Agnaton, whose name is, was really Amenhotep IV, um, 1364 to 1347 BC. According to the cult, Ra created himself from the primeval mound in the shape of a pyramid and then created all other gods. Thus, Ra was not only the sun god, he was also the universe, having created himself from himself. Ra was invoked as Aten, or the great disk that illuminated the world of the living and the dead. The effect of these doctrines can be seen in the sun worship of Pharaoh Agnaton, who became an uncompromising monotheist. Aldred has speculated that monotheism was Agnaton's own idea, the result of regarding Aten as a self-created heavenly king whose son, the Pharaoh, was also unique. Agnaton made Aten, the supreme state god, symbolized as a ray disc with each sunbeam ending in a ministering hand. Other gods were abolished, their images smashed, their names um, excised, their temples abandoned, and their um, revenues impounded. The plural word of God was suppressed. Now, I'm just going to go down here where it talks about uh, his wife. At the time, the pharaoh, previously known as Amenhotep IV, adopted the name Agnaton. His wife, Queen Nefertiti, shared his beliefs. I did a previous video on this where I talked about Nefertiti was a foreigner, and he married her, and um, her culture was one of monotheism in where they worshipped the one god, and Agnaton took on that belief system because... At that period in time, in Egypt, in Kemet, the so-called monotheistic philosophy or religious belief did not exist. And as you have heard, that after his, um, you know, actually during his reign and after his reign, the idea of monotheism was abolished. And in fact, Agnaten, or Amhotep IV, was a pacifist. So he um, was the one who started the first exodus where he took his followers out of Kemet to live in a separate region to worship Aten. He demilitarized Kemet to the fact of where it opened it up to foreign invasion. And his actions were in direct contradiction to tradition and the, the wishes of the priesthood who held a lot of power. So that's just some background on that, okay? As I said before, he uh, can be seen as the real life Moses or the inspiration for the story of, of Moses. Now, what we need to understand and take away from this is that um, let me just show you what um, Akhenaten looked like and the representation of him worshipping uh, the, the so-called son of Aten. Let us be clear that um, Akhenaten did not worship the sun. The sun was uh, a symbol of God, the one God. And the rays, the, the emanation of the rays, um, again, was analogous to the life-giving force that came from God. So let's be clear that our ancestors did not think literally. They were very much into abstract thought process, which was a right brain attribute. So many of these scholars have come along and written 
about Ignatian's worship of the sun. There was no worshiping of the sun. Um, it, 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 it just did not happen. So let us get that straight. Now, going, and you'll see here about the Rays and his family and, and Queen Nefertiti uh, and them paying tribute to God, the one God, the monotheistic God. The problem that Aten, or the problem with Aten, or that belief system did not encompass the thinking of cosmology, which is the predominant thought of each ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, because um, we saw the one manifesting as the many and the many as the one. But taking on his wife, Nefertiti, who came with her a foreign belief of this idea of only one God, because again, uh, they were, that culture was left brain thinking and the left brain thinkers do not deal well with uh, complementary or contradictory aspects. Again, they they look at you versus me, right, wrong, uh, Democrat, Republican, uh, liberal, conservatism, but they cannot think in a very integrated or systems uh, type perspective way. In fact, everything is contradictory, so it either you adapt one or you adapt the other, and if you are not with me, you're against me, and therefore we'll start a holy jihad, or we'll start a crusade to wipe you off the planet. So that is the way this comes forth. Now, why is this all so important? Because we have to understand this. What we are facing in today's world, is not just the idea of, of monotheism versus polytheism, but it's the idea of left brain thinking has the, the captured the attention and the dominance of the world, whereas integrating brain thinking, which spawned great civilizations, which is the only way to resolve conflict in the world, is where we are facing ourselves. Remember in the story of Asar and Aset, the only way that Haru could defeat Set was going to, to Huti for counsel. Because every time he battled Seth, it ended in a stalemate, which, which meant basically that he lost. But it was when he tuned into higher wisdom and thinking, which is only accessible through right brain, integrated brain thinking, that he was able to resolve the differences and to defeat Seth and then ascend to the throne. For us to really understand the plight that we're in today, I have to get back to the basics of the development of humankind. So let's look at this. There, there are two cultures, or or, or, or two ways in the world, two ways in which development was spawned. There was the cold climate of Europe. And because those who humanity in that particular region of the planet were subjected to a harsh climate, this meant that they um, did not get the sunshine or the rays of autumn <laughs> to develop enough vitamin D or to have melanin in their skin. Therefore, their skin was deplete um, of melanin which gave them the, the hue or color of what we call as being white. But that's not all. It's not just a matter of deficiency of the vitamin D and um, the lack of pigmentation in the skin, which was necessary in order to survive in that harsh climate. It also affected their, their hair, the development of their physiology. But when you are placed in a situation where food is scarce and resources are scarce, what happens is there's an adaptation process, meaning that the brain, through development, alters itself for survival purposes. Neuroplasticity. So... 
In other words, survival becomes the dominant program. And for survival, you have to think individualistically. You have to think about self first, not about the collective welfare of the community or for others, but primarily for self. And that collective or that um, wanting to share or looking out for the welfare of others is therefore um, deprioritized for self. What you have then is the left brain becoming the dominant thought process to, for survival purposes because the, the left brain thinks individualistic. It thinks separately. It's not out for uh, moralistic concerns. It is not out for our fellow man or woman. It is out for self-preservation. Now, contrast that to um, the more tropical and hot climate environments where the sun is everywhere and its rays are permeating everything. You develop melanin. You develop pigmentation in the skin, which absorbs the sun rays, and it helps you uh, and protects you from things like skin cancer. It changes your pigmentation, your hair texture, your physiology. And when you um, are adapting to a more hot and tropical climate, what happens is the brain starts to think in more of a right brain way, where it is now looking for collective cooperation, collective concerns, and it can afford to be more moral and sharing in its outlook upon the world. Now, this is the great divide. The brain then takes on these attributes, and in the two cultures, we see that there is a, uh, a type of polarization in one thought process over the other. Cold climate of Europe spawns left brain thinking, which is detail-oriented, logical, sequential, rational, focuses on math and science, um, analytical, um, uses logic, pure facts. Whereas the right brain is more creative. It looks at the big picture. Um, it's intuitive. It's holistic. It's spiritual. It synthesizes. It uses intuitive feelings, symbols, and images, which is why you see in many right brain cultures, they use um, uh, pictures, iconography, hieroglyphics. So think about that. Now, the idea of monotheism versus polytheism is basically um, you're looking at something that is coming directly out of the development of humankind within certain regions. Those born in colder climate regions will have a perspective and outlook on God that's monotheistic. Those who develop out of the more warmer climates of the planet will think more in terms of a polytheistic viewpoint. But let's go deeper into that. So when we talk about those involved in uh, the polytheistic perspective, they are more inclined to systematic thinking or cosmology or how individual parts work together for the support and sustaining of the whole. Now, I want to turn to the Meduna Ter, this book, really kind of uh, hones in on the point of the development of monotheism versus polytheism. And therein lies the problem. When we start looking at it from the perspective of one versus the other, and we don't understand that they both really are one and the same. So from the Dunatera, page 66, we see it says, first of all, the above shows clearly that the religion of blacks cannot be classified as polytheistic or nor can it be classified as monotheistic, as these terms are commonly, commonly misunderstood. From the earliest appearance of Western man on the historical scene, 20, uh, uh, 2500 BC, until the end of the 19th century AD, his thinking and perception of reality for the most part can be described as linear left brain, of course. That is to say that all manifestations are the result of single things acting upon single things. As Western science took 
a turn for the better toward the end of the 19th century AD, it began to become more and more apparent that all manifestations in the world were the expression of multiple things coordinating their functions. The new insight received the names of Gestalt theory, uh, field theory, systems theory, and dethroned the belief and expectations of finding anything that was not um, composed of a multiplicity of co-acting components. It ushered in the host of fantastic scientific technologies that make up today's world, computer, rockets, bioengineering, etc. A study of all of these new systems theories will show that they are pale versions of the systems theories, cosmology developed by non-Westerners in antiquity and contemporary Africa. The question is begging, why did it take Westerners so long, at least 6,000 years uh, behind blacks, um, to arrive at the realization? In previous chapters, we detailed the facts concerning Western man's polarization in the left brain hemisphere. Now, this part of the brain is only capable of, of linking sequentially following units, i.e., it is incapable of systems thinking. That is a task that belongs to the right side of the brain with its unlimited um, integrative capability. Western people would look, for example, at seven integrated sets of one-to-one -one relationships and see seven separate sets of one-to-one -one relationships. On the other hand, blacks and orientals will see one set of seven integrated subsets of one-to-one -one relationships. Polarized in the segregated part of the brain, Westerners could not integrate the host of deities of the black pantheon. They just couldn't see how the many were integral parts of the one. Let me say that again. They just couldn't see how the many were integral parts of the one. This stuff about co-acting multiple factors shaping and determining each and every physical entity was way beyond them. So they describe our religious practices as polytheistic. We must reject it for obvious reasons. And since the term monotheism fails to convey the reality that the one God functions, lives through a plurality of integrative parts, it, is, it must too be rejected. In this book, I will use coinages, system, system theism, and syntheism, both sin and cis as variants of the same prefix carrying the basic meaning of a whole compounded of several parts. Cis, S-Y-S, is the root of system, and sin, S-Y-N, that of synthesis, both analogous terms. So what the author is telling you here is that the European thought process has a problem with systems thinking or looking at the ecology of something and seeing the individual components uh, being unified, integrated with each other, acting on the benefit of the whole, while uh, non-Westerners, specifically African people, had no problem with this. And we also see that Western thinking has problems with abstract thought process, meaning that to them, Left brain thinkers, they see the physical body, but they do not see the abstract that lies within that, meaning that we are not physical beings, but we are consciousness, we are immaterial. They have a big problem with that. Now, let us go deeper into this discussion on the pantheon of gods. Um, as you'll take note from this next slide, you'll see how... Although we had the one Atom at the top and those other deities at the bottom, Shu, Tefnut, Geb, Nut, Isis, Osiris, Nephis, Seth, all of those were emanations of the one, but integrated processes that depend, that were interdependent on each other for the functioning of the one. Again, Western thought process is, um, is, it's only one or the other, the Hegelian dialectic. You're the for me or you're against me. This is the, the ecology. This is the systems thinking. Um, this is the pantheon 
of gods that we subscribe to. And when you are thinking in this process, you have no problem with contradictory elements or complementary elements. This is why Western culture is embedded and entrenched in racism, in sexism, in greed, because they cannot reconcile opposites. Let's take this a step further and look at the concept of God from a Western and non-Western perspective. The European concept of God is one of power, submission, dominance, fear, obedience, hierarchy, and separate from um, mankind or humankind. So, so the idea of God is about power, that, that to be um, a true worshiper of God is to be submissive. God is about dominance. God is about you fearing him. And also notice while we're on that, how God is suddenly taking on the idea of a male figure. Contrast this to the, the African or the non-Western perspective of God, uh, which is an elder, that of oneness, holistic, sharing, love, interdependence. God needs us because God places its consciousness within us to learn and, and grow to understand itself better. And what I'm telling you is that the problem with our world today is the perspective that we have, which is trapped in left brain thinking. And it, it is the source of the problems of the world. To attack things like racism, polytheism versus monotheism, um, to attack things as um, gender e inequality, you're just looking at basically the, 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 um, the effect and not the cause. We have to get to the heart of the matter, the, the true cause of what is going on, and not attacking things such as the mythological story of the hydra, who once you cut off one head, grows another head. So you're not dealing with the essential cause, but you're dealing with the effect. So going back to what I was saying before, this all has its root and origin of the development of humanity based on the region um, that we come from, those coming from the, the, the cold climate of Europe or the Caucasus Mountains or what have you, had to develop a left brain polarized way of thinking for survival purposes. Therefore, um, morality was deprioritized because if you're looking out for someone above your own interest and you will perish because there's no resources, no abundance of food. So the brain says, hey, take care of self first, which is why you see in Western culture is all about individual efforts above the collective. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't mind, it's not important the effect that you have on others. Whereas in African culture, the development of integrated brain thinking fostered the idea of morality, fostered the idea of communal and collective efforts above the individual. Therefore, they had the philosophy of when someone did wrong, they would look at how the community failed that individual. So what, what I'm talking about here is that the mere fact that you even pose the idea of monotheism versus polytheism shows that you're engaged in left brain thinking. Because there is no one or the other. And we have to redefine this now, as the author was saying in the Meduna Terre, is that the term monotheism and polytheism are incorrect naming conventions that what we're dealing with is um, synthesis, synthesis. And when you operate based on synthetical or synthesis thinking, then you can solve problems. You can integrate things into the whole without there being a contradiction. But if you see 
what is being established, especially by the ruling elite in the major um, religions, Judaism, Christianity, um, especially Islam, is that if you're not for my God, then I am going on a holy jihad or a crusade or a witch hunt to remove you from the planet. That is because the left brain is incapable of reconciling differences. It does not know how to incorporate components into the whole so that the whole can function. A place for everything and everything is its place is the basis of cosmological thinking, of gestalt thinking. And this is where we as humankind are falling off. And this is why we currently exist in the dark ages. I hope this video has been of benefit to you and has shed light on the problem that we are facing now. Because what we're doing is we're creating factionalism. We're creating um, endless labels and, de and definitions and terms to classify people. I'm a member of the LGBT. I am a member of MGTOW. I'm a feminist. I'm a, I'm a men's rights activist. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm a, I'm a member of the Tea Party. I'm a liberal, conservative. And it goes on and on and on. There's not just two genders. Now there's 102 genders. Do you see the problem that this mindset that is permeating the planet is creating problems. It is the source of problems. We have to take a step back and go to the way that our ancestors thought, which is integrated brain thinking, because they were able to establish the most advanced civilizations and cultures on the planet. And with that, I thank you for tuning in. Again, hit the like button on this video, subscribe to my channel, and I have some free eBooks that you can download, which will get more into these discussions and provide more knowledge for you to study on your own. This is Kasank Ma'akeparu, son of Ma'at and Tehuti. Until my next broadcast, Amen Ra.